you know, we in our institution, we get HER2 markers on everybody off the core. Um, and I think there are issues that go back and forth about whether HER2 off a core biopsy is appropriate or not. Um, but on the other hand, our surgeons, in, in a way, we've almost created a monster. Because our surgeons who, you know, you've always want surgeons to refer appropriately for neoadjuvant therapy. Our surgeons now have gone the other direction. I'm getting women now with one centimeter, you know, HER2 positive tumors for neoadjuvant therapy. And which is a reasonable thing because you can give them, as we all just said, pertuzumab. It's the only setting now on label. You know, and you can only get it for those however many cycles to do. Another question I think that was kind of brought up a little bit um, by Hope is that what regimen will you use with neoadjuvant therapy with pertuzumab? We heard a little bit of anthracycline. We have some kind of TCH kind of people on this panel as well. I'm really curious to see what people say. I wanted to, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, I was a ACTH person, you know, <laughs> but the Trifena trial, which looked at the TCH with the pertuzumab, versus an anthracycline regimen with or without the pertuzumab, followed by the taxane, um, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, have all had really high PAF-CR rates. There was like no difference. So that really convinced me that when it comes to a pertuzumab-based regimen that I can just give the TCHP. So that's what I've been doing. I've not been using the anthracycline anymore because I thought the trifena was really helpful in that regard. That's interesting because there was their primary endpoint was cardiac safety, right, for trifena? I believe so. I think that, they were I looking the at whether you could yeah. give the um, the HER2 targeted therapy with the anthracycline. So I've always wondered whether or not we should take that as sort of the end all, uh, because that wasn't the primary endpoint. Was looking at response, and and certainly there were no compar comparisons between an anthracycline based regimen. But I think it's quite appealing, because you can reduce toxicity for those patients. I think this boiled down to a balanced discussion, just like we would have in the adjuvant setting for a HER2 positive patient. And I think it's not unreasonable to present both options to patients and discuss the merits and perhaps demerits of one regimen versus another and uh, let the patient and their families help weigh in on these decisions. One last comment before we move on, and we're, this kind of leads into the next comment about metastatic therapy. I mean, Mark, your own data that you presented at ASCO several years ago, uh, as well as I believe published in the JCO, mm -hmm. suggests that TH, uh, that is uh, docetaxel trastuzumab, is equivalent, at least in the metastatic setting, to TCH. And so I guess the question really becomes, and I think a lot of docs who start using TCHP will ask this question, which is if someone has toxicity to the carbo portion of that neoadjuvant therapy, is it appropriate to delete the carbo if you have to and do simply THP or do you have to do an anthracycline at that point? So it's very important to remember that that randomized trial, BCRG005, uh, had an imbalance in the study design with regard to the docetaxel dose. Okay. So the docetaxel dose of the TCH arm was docetaxel 75, 75 per meter. Right. In the single agent docetaxel arm without the carbo, it was 100 per meter squared docetaxel. Yep. Good point. So it was not actually a true comparison of with or without carbo. It was a comparison of two different regimens with different doses. So it can't in a pure fashion actually answer your question. That said, if somebody's having carbotoxicity, I would have no hesitation to drop the carbo. That, that would not influence me. But uh, would, you add the anthracycline, would you add an anthracycline? No, no, I wouldn't feel strongly about yeah. that either. And yeah, I'm comfortable with the single agent docetaxel, especially in the neoadjuvant setting, because I sure. actually think residual disease with docetaxel, pertuzumab, trastuzumab, if you get a PCR at that, you might spare these women the toxicity of carboplatin. But keep in mind, in that comparison of BCRG005, sorry to interrupt. It was seven. It was not five. It was 007. Zero seven. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so in Just that to trial, to be kind <laughs> sorry, it's clear. been a while since yeah, I know. that period. Right. Um, so in that <coughs> trial, the toxicity was actually arguably higher in the docetaxel trastuzumab arm than in the TCH Because of the higher dose. Because of the higher dose. Because of the higher docetaxel dose. I think yeah. there's, there's a couple of considerations to keep in mind there. One is we don't have outcome data from uh, Trifena or from the Neosphere trial. So we don't know yet what the outcome will be for these patients. And we have to be a little bit cautious when we're dropping drugs uh, in patients who have not the little cancers that we're talking about now doing more neoadjuvant therapy for, but the more high risk disease. Uh, so I would just caution there. And one of the things I've done, uh, which I, I don't know, nobody mentioned, but uh, when people don't tolerate the docetaxel carboplatin is to switch to weekly paclitaxel with a lower dose of carboplatin, which people tolerate really well. So uh, and that allows you to give the medications and maybe not feel like you're leaving out something critical uh, in the mix. 
The other thing I think that's going to be interesting presented at San Antonio is the weekly Packley tax all for 12 weeks with a year of trastuzumab data uh, presented by uh, Sarah Tulaney and uh, the group at Dana-Farber, but a multi-center trial that showed really impressive, a uh, single arm, 400 patient trial, but very impressive outcome for small HER2 positive tumors. The next trial that they're running is a randomized trial comparing that regimen to TDM1, CADS, uh, Cadsila, or whatever we're calling it now, trastuzumab m uh, And uh, that'll be very interesting. I think you have two relatively low toxicity regimens for these smaller HER2-positive tumors. Maybe we'll want to treat them in the editing. We'll get to that in a minute when we talk about adjuvant therapy, because that's a really important trial, I think. Albeit a phase two, I think it's a really important study that may have some clinical relevance.